Hello, music freaks. This is your... I shouldn't be saying that, right? All because of that thumbnail. <laughs> so, let me clarify. I made it for mainly two reasons. For one, I wanted to encapsulate the whole point of the video, to not judge a book from its cover. Like Boards of Canada put symbols in their music as an artistic meme, my thumbnail was super clickbait on purpose, as a joke if you will. The second reason the real one. was to get a bunch of views. Plain and simple. <laughs> Moving on, today we won't talk about IDM for the first time, yay! And instead, we'll talk about Talk Talk's last album, Laughing Stock. I had the idea of discussing this release for quite some time, but the recent passing away of the band's ex-frontman Mark Hollis pushed me into making my ideas a reality. This episode is dedicated to you, Mark. So, enough chit chat, let's start with the analysis, shall we? Where are my headphones then again? Oh, here they are. It's time to do that thing once again. Here we are discussing Talk Talk, a band that really shows how a sound can mature and morph into something more creative and unique from a musical standpoint. To discuss Laughing Stock, we first must address when this shift happened. The Color of Spring was published in 1985 and it is the band's third album and follow-up to It's My Life. It's where the band started abandoning the synth-pop sound and took a more art-rock direction. It was a massive success for Talk Talk, so EMI, Talk Talk's label at the time, gave the band La Carte Blanche for their next project. By 1988, this project was ready and had a name Spirit of Eden. Not even EMI knew how to market Spirit of Eden properly. Why, you may be asking? That's because it differs so much from what the band had released by the time. You see, Talk Talk started as a pop group and a somewhat successful one, but Mark Hollis, the band's mastermind and singer, wanted to do more with Talk Talk's sound, and when the opportunity arose, Spirit of Eden came to fruition, an album so marketable that led to Talk Talk and EMI parting ways just after a pretty steamy trial that resulted in the band winning and signing to the label Polydor. Don't get me wrong, it's no truth mask replica, actually far from it. But it sure isn't It's My Life, the band's catchiest album. Whew, after this lengthy introduction, it's time to discuss the meaning of the title of this video. Post-rock wasn't even a thing at the time of Spirit of Eden or Laughing Stock. In fact, the term post-rock was coined in 1994 by critic Simon Reynolds. Sure, that doesn't mean that post-rock wasn't a thing, it just wasn't formed in its entirety yet. It needed something more, it needed inspiration. To me, these two albums were the solid ground that the genre needed to flourish alongside other projects. Post-rock eventually evolved into something different, but listening to Laughing Stock inevitably gives you the genre's signature feel, melancholy and loneliness at their finest. After the Flood is the third track on Laughing Stock, and it's one of the songs I hold most dearly inside my heart. It's that good. When those drums gently slide in, followed by that amazing organ, all the while those guitar and piano samples repeat on loop. Man, it makes me cheer every time. Yes, you heard me right, I said samples. That's because the recording process for this record consisted in 50 or so musicians like-minded, as Mark Hollis stated, who were recorded while improvising. Oftentimes they weren't given any song structure or chord progression and were instead encouraged to do their best to express their true essence. Just imagine going through those countless hours of music to make after the flood 
Honus's voice feels very gentle, unintrusive and melancholic. His voice just feels like one of the other instruments and not an actual voice, making the words almost unrecognizable at times. When that first chorus hits you, you can feel your skin all tingly, shivers down your spine. Oh, this is turning into some kind of low quality anti, right? Then, that distorted and screeching guitar solo comes in. A truly faithful auditory explanation of anxiety and hopelessness if I have to explain it somehow. Don't worry, after repeat listens, it almost feels like picking flowers, so you should be okay. Anyway, a truly remarkable song that fortunately lasts the right amount of time to give it the right exposure it deserves, 9 minutes and 40 seconds. Also, before moving on, it's worth mentioning that bone gargling <laughs> at the beginning and at the end of the song, that's actually Mark Hollis's bug. So, as you can imagine, this isn't music for everybody and, like Spirit of Eden, this album didn't sell well, not even close to their first records, especially with fans upset with the drastic change in style that Talk Talk went for. So how come this album shaped a genre like post-rock? You probably heard how many artists like Johann Sebastian Bach were pretty unpopular when alive, but found new life and popularity, ironically, when they were already dead. In Bach's case, it took almost a whole century for people to catch up to his genius, and the same can be said for Laughing Stock. An album that, on its release, received mixed receptions, including very harsh reviews, and that later on was re-evaluated, maybe thanks to a new audience gathering around Laughing Stock and Spirit of Eden. Sometimes it just takes time for an artist to be appreciated. There comes a time when an artist needs to choose between making music for art's sake or just for the money. If the answer is the former one, then you shouldn't expect fame come washing you in waves. Sometimes these niche bands see small fame and sometimes they don't. As I once said to a friend of mine, innovative artists are just like grains of sand inside a hourglass. They just seem useless, but they push time forward, even if just by a fraction of time. Man, I just cannot see why I'm not famous after this sentence! The point of this video is that the world And art especially needs people who think out of the box. Otherwise, we would be still painting three quarters portraits of popes, kings and Jesus without even having naked women mixed in them. So, that concludes this pretty lengthy video, but I think Laughing Stock needed the special treatment. You probably noticed, or not, that the video's title and subject don't match what I anticipated in the last episode. That's because I felt I wasn't doing justice to Sgt. Pepper, so I'll pull a Metroid Prime <laughs> on it and publish it someday, whenever I feel to. Or not publish it at all, right Konami? Right, mother four! Oh boy, I can't wait for summer 2015! So I'm recording this clip on the fly because I noticed I didn't record this part of the video when I started working on the episode, so... I've also noticed how, uh, just after Mark Hollis's death, the rights for many of his songs and Talk Talk's songs as well were spread all across the internet, from YouTube to Spotify, and all other platforms because you know laughing stock wasn't even available on spotify for quite some time and then like one day after his death it was suddenly available and i was <laughs> very happy about it because there was no proper way or legal way to listen to it besides um, shady websites where you could download it for free <laughs> packaged in a RAR file, you know what I mean, you download music illegally too, don't you? So that makes me wonder what if it's Mark Hollis' will to spread his ashes all across the internet. That will be a really interesting move by a guy who retired from music completely and wanted to remove his name from all of his collaborations. So did you know that my next album will come out tomorrow? That's it, tomorrow! And expect a new episode this week, so stay tuned. Thanks Mark Hollis for the beautiful music you published. See ya! in the next episode. Bye!